Thank you for coming to my talk. Um, my name is Anastasia Dimashuk. And this talk actually was uh, designed and created by two co-speakers. Unfortunately, the second uh, first co-speaker co couldn't come today, but I will present also her part. I will do my best. <laughs> so here is the link. You can follow the, all the presentation slides and also use all the links because um, all the slides are equipped with all the links to some sources, with more information, and maybe um, to some uh, free advices, which you can use later, and with all the pictures and examples and everything. So what is the talk about? How many of you have any ideas which you want to present? Just give me some hints. Okay, maybe some uh, projects or maybe some features, it doesn't matter. If you have any idea and you want to present it to somebody, for example, your uh, chief or CEO or CFO, somebody um, who even is not te a technical person, then probably you need to have some skills of presentation and everything. It's not just of presenting some slides. It's about showing your idea and developing f it further. And if you have some idea and you, you're stuck with that or you don't know how to go with it, so probably it's the right place to sit. <laughs> um, actually, in my experience, um, I had the um, problem uh, when uh, together with a team of 10 people, we created the amazing backend. It was super great. It was working perfectly. It was saving hours and hours of uh, working um, time. Um, so it was saving like uh, two hours per day per developer for the team of 500 people. That's a lot, I would say. And also we presented that project with amazing backend and some um, kind of no front end, <laughs> no UI, um, to our customer. And we said, hey, you can just see URL and just get the results and get everything done and then you will get the file with all the results. And he said, yeah, but there is another team and they are presenting kind of the same, so they're working in the same field. Yeah, you don't know about them, but they showed us amazing UI, amazing thing. Yeah, they don't have backend, but they will probably win because they have something which you can click and then you will get something. And we said, yeah, 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 wait, we will do our job, we will do everything in a week, and then, yeah, we speed up, we were working hard and making as much as we can, and we presented also UI, so we kind of won that battle, but sometimes you would be in the place when um, you cannot really have the second chance. So you got the idea, um, you got the feeling that it's something which will uh, be super great, which will save all the time which you can help with all the developers, but then you cannot present it fine, you cannot show it, and then you're failing. I will help you with that. I will help you to create your idea from um, just raw idea to the architecture design. So let's start. First of all, I would like to tell you some words about my company because they are supporting me a lot, also in uh, my skills and also developing myself. Uh, so it's a siren, it's an internet security company. I will show you some uh, short video about the company. Um, maybe you saw it already in the previous session. <laughs> um, uh, Siren um, is developing um, system as a service, um, standalone uh, solution for um, business companies. We are um, on the cloud, we are parsing um, all the emails uh, from our partners and then saying if it's spam or not, vision or everything. And as everything is on the cloud, so we are as fast as it could be. And if there is a, a new attack already alive, then it's taking um, usually some minutes or maybe maximum hours to fix it. And then it's live for all the speakers and, uh, sorry, for the speakers, uh, for all the people uh, which are using our services. So it's really nice. Um, to have such a speed because uh, some old solutions where you need to install all the software 
um, on your company's servers, then you, it will take ages and uh, ages to update and to get those updates and then install and everything. So it's not really so fast as it should be nowadays. We have uh, different uh, services for um, anti-spam uh, solutions to check the emails and also um, to um, answer the customers. We have uh, some uh, our inside um, internal tools, which uh, I'm developing currently. And during my um, daily tasks, I'm dealing uh, a lot with uh, designing uh, some new ideas. And then I need to present it uh, to sometimes to my colleagues, sometimes to my boss, and then to um, make him believe that my idea, my feature will work. And even if I will show him amazing architecture, but it will be just some short schema, he will say, no, nah, that might not work. And then I'm trying to do my best to keep up with all the technologies and everything, and then they are accepting more times <laughs> my talks and my ideas. So what's in the talk? We will start with some basic concepts, uh, then we will visualize the idea. Um, we will take one simple example to show everything um, and see how to develop it. Then we will talk uh, a little bit about visual style, and then we will go a bit deeper to object-oriented analysis and design approach and then just jump to some conclusions. So let's dive into basics. What is the design? Design, as you can read everywhere, it's just a creation of uh, some plan uh, of an object which you can think in your mind. So it's like a representation of the object. What is the visual design? It's a visual in representation somewhere on the media, uh, maybe in some uh, photos, pictures, some mock-ups, and everything. What is software design? It's a um, special design uh, for creating of a new software. What is architecture? Architecture is also um, a process and the product of creating some plans and some schemas and um, some design steps, how will the product will look like. What is software architecture? It's mostly about software, about creating the software and um, creating some schemas only about the software, how it's going to work. So building a software architecture is always about trade-offs. As you can see, I have this huge list of system quality attributes. And if you will fulfill all of them, I have written just a few of them. So if you will fulfill all of them, it will take years to build such a solution. It will be so um, expensive and time consuming. And you need 1,000 million developers to fulfill that. And I'm not sure that it's even possible to fulfill all of the requirements. So um, building of the software, it's always about trade-offs, depending on how much resources and time you have, uh, it will be um, a different architecture and different software. For example, if you are running out of time and you need to run it as soon as possible, then you will probably take something smaller, maybe some uh, smaller features, um, so some shorter features, and um, maybe like you will go to monolith structure. If not, uh, maybe you will go further into um, some microservices or just services. So it's always about trade-offs. So let's start. Here is, you can see at uh, the photo, is a working place of a visual designer. <laughs> Actually, it's a place of my second co-speaker. Um, let's try uh, to build the idea on, based on some example. Then you will see how is it going to work. Um, how many of you have uh, swapped something like uh, clothes or jobs or uh, whatever, homes, working places? Did you swap something? <laughs> OK. <laughs> but actually, it's really, really popular. I searched on, my, on the internet, and the job swap idea, it's not really well developed. Um, so for example, you're working, um, 
as a Python developer, but actually you were uh, always dreaming to be a, a Python keeper. <laughs> you want to <laughs> take care of Pythons or maybe gorillas or maybe uh, some other um, activities. Maybe you wanted to make tea in your life, but actually you are a software developer, so you cannot really go there and just work as a zookeeper. You can ju cannot just switch. So that's the idea, uh, to switch for one single day just to try yourself if you will work in this area and if you need to speed up with learning of something new. It's just for example, it's not a project, <laughs> not a real one. Maybe in the future, but yes. Um, so um, in this area, we have the idea of uh, job swap. When you have a job, um, still have it, <laughs> for sure, and you want to swap with somebody. And there is another uh, somebody uh, who wants to do the same. Uh, so let's analyze. For sure, we will have some registered user and unregistered user. Now we defined user types. We have two of them. Um, let's define what this unregistered user is going to do at the website. For example, we have a website for job, job swaps, um, like, um, I don't know, swap your home, but for jobs. Unregistered user uh, is coming to website and he understands everything. How is it working? How is it looking like? So it's like a process, um, uh, which I'm showing right now. It's how to develop your idea. You had the idea of a job swap website. And then you are um, starting with development with the defining of user types. Then the next step, you are defining how are they behaving. This is a behavior of uh, unregistered user and this is behavior of registered users. Um, now you defined how are they um, aware of the website? How is it going to look like? We'll define um, uh, later your um, like UI and your design. How do we decide um, how to show uh, the website and how to create it? Mm, we can um, do our conclusions based on mood and on target audience. Um, mood, for example, um, you can describe your project with some keywords, some associations with the uh, job swap idea. Any ideas of job swap moods, for example? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes? Yes, that's true. Um, then uh, we will define in uh, target audience. Um, who is our target audience? Uh, for sure, it's somebody who is willing to swap something, who is going to try something new, and um, somebody who is uh, as couraged as <laughs> jumping on something new and doing some crazy stuff. But for sure, the user should have a job, to have a possibility of swap. Um, I defined here some mood types and some target audience types. Uh, the mood could be like a business experience, fun, life change. Um, the mood will define how the main page will look like. For example, if it's uh, more like a business style, then you probably have to look for uh, some similar pages about business style. If it's just for fun and you are a targeting audience just uh, to have fun there, then probably it's another coloring and style and everything. So let's dive a bit more about uh, in the vid visual design. Um, visualization of the idea uh, will consist of um, um, defining basic elements, then creating the wireframes. So uh, website wireframes is the skeletal um, um, like mock-up of the website. It's how um, will the user experience look like. Um, for that, we can use something like that. We can just define that here we will have a catchy picture, there we will have like a button or something. And that we will, um, while doing that, we will develop more our idea and we will um, define what do we really need in our idea. 
Um, actually, this is a special case because you are pre presenting your own idea. You are not taking requirements from somebody. You are not taking requirements from your customer or somebody. If you will have a customer, then probably everything you need to ask from them. Um, and those steps are also possible, but they should be a bit changed because uh, then you will probably have some requirements and then you can jump to other part or um, you will not have some requirements and then you can ask more questions. Um, so uh, I will show you the example uh, of wireframes for unregistered user. It's uh, like a great handline with uh, this description of uh, the main idea and also some um, like uh, hints where to go and what to do. Then it will explain how the job swap idea is working and then it will show some hot jobs. For a registered user, everything will be a bit different because uh, he knows everything, how is it working and what to do on the web page and how to proceed with that. So then um, it will have just uh, applications and just a simple s uh, search. For creation of that mockups, we used Figma. I can show you, maybe. It's taking some time to render. Um, so Figma is for free. You can just register then. Um, it's really easy to create a mock-up, just to create a page, to put some um, sort of um, boxes, black or red or something, um, and then just to render it and show it how's it going to look like. Let's wait a little bit more. So here we have registered user on the side and then unregistered user. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe internet is too fast today. Yes. Finally, it's done. So this is for unregistered user. We have a headline and then we have all the description. It's a one a single page application. For sure we want our user to stay on the page. That's why it's built like that. Um, and then we have all the other stuff to have uh, to get the attention of the user. Let's develop further. Um, so um, about visualization of the idea, uh, we also we already used target audience and then mood and spirit of the website. And uh, there is a, another thing which we need to think about. It's the color, uh, colors, typography, images, and icons. So visual style examples. For sure, if you are developing something, then you need to uh, search uh, on the internet if there is something which is pretty similar. Um, for swap, you can think like maybe Airbnb might be a great idea, um, or maybe uh, it's more like business, it's a news website, and this is couch surfing. It's also about kind of swapping homes, not really, but a, a little bit. Um, and then the meetup, it's like hosting a meetup and then organizing something. It's more about adventurous people. This is about life exploration. So the thing is, when you are thinking about your idea, you need to check some other's uh, ideas because um, you need to use um, similar colors which will uh, follow you um, or, or the user, the, follow the user um, to use the same kind of experience, spirit and pattern which is used by something which is already well known. Uh, for example, if you will take um, a news website for um, a news idea for a dating website, then it might not be work because it's like too cold and not that great for meeting other people, not that adventurous. Um, so that's why you need to keep updated with all of the news and uh, all of the um, ideas already online. Psychology behind the colors. Um, also, you need to check which color you want to use, um, if it's appropriate or not. You can check that a bit later. Typography, there are different uh, kind of types, uh, fonts. Um, it's better to use not 
that hard to read and understand. So the last one is totally un unreadable. And if you want to make a headline with that, then it's probably not the best idea ever. Um, usually the normal one, which is uh, sans serif, uh, is used. It doesn't have this serifs thing. And it's more readable. It's more um, easy to understand and to catch up the idea. So job swap website design. We have already created it. Let's take a look how is it looking like, if you would like to apply for something like that. It's a main page for unregistered user. It's looking like that. And then it's explaining all of the steps. Three steps. And the hot jobs, of course. And some successful stories, as usual. Some reviews, some partners, social links. And for registered user, it's just applications, recommended jobs, and all the same social links and partners. Um, we have some links with uh, some free graphic resources. We can use unsplash.com to get some um, photos and everything uh, which is for free and you can just use it. Uh, also icons and prototyping uh, Figma was used. And then uh, now it's object oriented part. How to design backend part. Um, this is my table. It's looking like that. It's almost the same as designers, but it has some more modeling <laughs> there. So let's start um, about basics of object-oriented approach. Um, this approach um, is about uh, showing everything as an object. You need to define main object and then main objects and then um, just um, develop it. Primary tasks of uh, object-oriented design is uh, to define objects, uh, to de describe them, and to show how are they related and how are they working with each other. Object or analysis tools. How many of you used UML or C4 model or any of them? UML? Yes. Mm, that's nice. Um, actually, UML is uh, most commonly used. Uh, it's uh, not that simple as can be, but there are a lot of books and uh, all of the sources, how to work with it. And um, non-UML, uh, which I really like, is a C4 model. Maybe I will show you the idea. But the idea behind the C4 model, which I really like, it's that um, everything is super simple. It shouldn't be so decorated. You shouldn't show um, some uh, component structures as uh, they are hard to understand. So this is like a model where you have just uh, boxes with names. And then if you will even decorate, yeah, it will feel better. You will understand more. But even if you will remove all the decorations, then it will be still understandable and clear to um, update it, um, to share with somebody. So I will share you my example with some different models. Um, as we defined on the previous steps, our use cases uh, for um, unregistered user and registered user, we, now we can develop it further for uh, the z design. Let's keep the um, diagram up to date. Um, it's a use case which we wanted to develop. Um, so the start um, is uh, how is the use case is working. The um, user is coming to the website, then it's entering the city, then checking all the available jobs, and then finding something interesting, then clicking apply, and then um, if it's registered, then applying, uh, adding more information. If not registered, then uh, registration form and some other step for unregistered. 
But what are the main components? For example, we will define a few, we'll define few of them, like a user, um, a job, an application, and maybe a job swap offer, and maybe some results of application. Um, it was written by hand, by the way. <laughs> I didn't use any tools. Um, so at the very beginning, when you are not sure about the architecture, you will start with the um, building the components and then thinking and analyzing how are they going to work together. For example, user will um, have the application or will create the application and then um, user will got a job swap offer and the job swap offer will probably be connected to a job, for sure it will be, and the application will have some results of uh, the application. So the components diagram will look like that. Uh, we'll have like database of users, database of applications, um, database of jobs, and then um, they will be related to job with a submit a job component. Um, it's not only an object, it's more about component uh, which is working on uh, some function. Um, it can be uh, like a microservice, also it can be like a part of the uh, monolith structure. Also depending um, how much time uh, will we have, um, how much time and money, um, then we will define less or more models. It's more simplified, we just need a user, bunch of jobs, application, and maybe results. Or even we can get rid of results, we can put there everything in application. Then we will have a component as a user, which uh, has a job, um, and the application with the job offer. C4 model. C4 model um, will look like that. It will uh, show the components of our um, application. Um, for sure, we have single page application, which is providing everything and which is uh, based um, on the idea to keep the user on the page. We will have database in all of the structures there. And then we will have um, some components, uh, sign in, register form, um, submit a job, service, for example, um, form uh, offer uh, on the swap of users, it will be um, something based on the preferences of user, for example, and um, submit an application. Object-oriented design. Um, when you created those models and you defined um, the base uh, components, then for sure, uh, you will go uh, for the object-oriented design. You have an object, and then you need to uh, define how they are related uh, with each other, how they are working with each other. Then you can create a um, database, you can create a flow, how is it going to work, and um, use for that different models. Uh, so the input for object-oriented design um, should be provided on the previous step um, as an object-oriented analysis when you have all of the forms defined and then you need just to use that and, as input. Sometimes if you are not um, your own designer and developer, um, then you will have all of those requirements already and then it will be uh, a part of a design already. So it depends really on your structure and on your um, system. Um, then you will have uh, different ways of understanding. But um, if you have the idea and you need to um, develop it, then think how is it going to work, how the user will experience there on the website, and how um, do you want to build it as fast as possible, as uh, good as you can, <laughs> or just cheap. Do you have any questions? Yes. Questions? If you have any questions, just raise your hand. Hi, uh, thank you for the talk. Um, so you started off with, well, building a, 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 a front page design, basically. Um, 
how do you how do you validate that this is a, a good design actually? It depends um, how you're going to present. If you are presented to somebody, then you will get the feedback. For sure, you will win or not. <laughs> okay. Oh, thanks. Any other questions? Oh, have some time, so there is somebody oh. over here. Yep. yep. Hello. How do you make the entire process to be incremental from the, the analysis of the application until the, the end, until delivery? Uh, you mean to add more features or uh, uh, to? Uh, yes, add more feature in like in agile way. Uh, do you take um, uh, feedback from um, clients or uh, users or? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, so it depends um, how is your workflow is. If you need to present to somebody and uh, to get the feedback right away, and you need to um, just show somebody and to win the tender or uh, to get the feedback or to convince somebody to go for it, then you will probably say, I need a week for that. And then I will show it. And if it's uh, more about building the software architecture at work, and probably you will have a team, and then uh, you will have sprints, uh, epics, and uh, so on. So you will have an epic to create a design uh, of uh, like a visual design, then another epic to create uh, uh, some back-end part, some design, and then you will have a feedback. So you will say, I need to finish those epics, and then I will show you. If not, then depends, of course, on your project. If you will show that just a part of it and then get the feedback, then you can change something. But uh, for sure, UI will be changed. That's why we are not programming here the UI part. Uh, we are just showing how can it look like. And then we are showing also the components. Sometimes you need to change everything in two years. What we did, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, this is um, what I'm wondering. Uh, for a startup, uh, it's better to start uh, with a concept and add more features after that um, based on um, users' uh, feedback. So the, the question was more for a um, product manager or product owner, not for the development part. Because yeah, we know the developer development will follow the, the business after all. I would say it's uh, better to start with a small feature just to run it live or to show to somebody and get the feedback than to go uh, so huge then you need to develop like one year or two years. It's better to show something small and then get the feedback right away or just to be fast on the market because some, sometimes uh, somebody will take your idea. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Do you have a question? No. <laughs> All right. I do think I have the power to dismiss you, but before <laughs> we do that, let's thank the speaker. <laughs>